So when he left me with the Bible, I then started reading Corinthians, um, Ephesians, Galatians, and I'm thinking, goodness, this is so relevant. This speaks to me. I can actually read it, and I can actually find principles that can affect me and impact me for my day, for my week, for my life. And I wasn't getting that out of, say, the, 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 anything else I was reading. And I thought, now, what this is also saying is that Jesus must become my Lord and Savior. And that was the hard bit because I had to pray hard about that. I said, goodness, if he's to be my Lord and Savior, that's quite something because then what about all my Hindu gods and what about all my, the other things that I do? Uh, I had many, many gods and one god for wealth and there was one god for good luck and one god for this and one god for that. Now, it's, there is only one god and no other. And that was a big struggle. And yet, within that lay the answer to my struggle. Because as a Hindu, one of the struggles I had was this whole thing of karma. The principle of karma, to put it in a nutshell, is what you sow, you reap. You do good, you'll reap good. You do bad, you'll reap bad. And the struggle I had as a Hindu, and that every Hindu has, is the payment of the karmic debt. There is a debt of karma, and we have to pay it. And only I can pay it, according to Hinduism. Therefore, I must do the good that will counteract the bad, that will eventually give me a better birth in my new life. And it'll go on and on and on in a cycle of births and rebirths until I achieve nirvana. And while I didn't know any better, that was the principle I worked with. So I'd always try and do good and always try and avoid bad. But it was a struggle. I was losing. I went to pubs. I went drinking. I did this. I did that. How was I ever going to pay ever, ever, ever for this debt? And when I was sitting in that pub and reflecting on life and thereafter struggling with the accepting of Christ, the struggle really was this. I am spiritually bankrupt. My karmic debt is so big that I got a choice. I either resign myself to that and say, that's it. I've got to give up on this life. I'll go into the next life and see what happens. And within the family, the tragedies were seeming to play that back again and again, the, you know, the early cessation of life to maybe have a better chance the next time around. Or I look at this option of Christ and say, now look, Christ says he paid for all my sins. Now I read that as Christ says he paid for all my karma because all the bad deeds I've done, he's paid for. If there's any good I've ever done, well, Christ is always the source of good. Therefore, it must be he's got something to do with all this. And I struggled and I thought, yes, uh, I think there is something here. Christ is saying he paid for my karma. Now, this is, if this is true, then this is very exciting news indeed because this is something worth looking at because no other guru has ever claimed that he can pay for my karmas. No guru has made that claim. But this Sanatan Satguru, Yesu Masi, is saying, I paid for all your sins. And that started making sense to me. I thought, well, maybe there's something here. And I did get to the point where I got on my knees and I still remember doing this very, very visibly. I opened the door, uh, the window in my room. There's these huge windows in Linstead Hall. I opened it and I said, Lord Jesus, I confess that I've got to a point in my life where I just can't continue on my own. I need help, and I'm going to ask you to come in. I'm asking you, Lord, to come into my heart, to come into my life, to take charge and take control, and I will submit to you. 